Coach Anthony Nibble behind the gloves, man. But congratulations on the great win. Uh, tonight, you showed that you can box. You showed that you can use angles, that you can use lateral movement, that you can actually box from the outside. We saw Peterson try to walk you down, which I don't think was the smartest decision. I obviously showed that. So uh, do you think that also show people who think that you're just a come forward fighter, who think that you just put pressure that you can actually box, utilize movement, angles, and whatnot? Um, yeah, I mean, guys who grew up with me in the amateurs know I can box. You know, I started out boxing, you know, I didn't win national tournaments and win tournaments overseas and, you know, become Olympian because I was just a come forward fighter. You know, I can do it both. I can box it, I can come forward, but, you know, I never really shot that game because, you know, I always knew I could just press guys out and just beat them up. So, you know, my coach told me to, to, to show different things and vary my, my style up and my punches up and just step over. So um, I listened to him in this fight and just stepping over, using my angles and things like that. Can you, uh, two questions for you. The first one, can you just discuss your, uh, you relied a lot on, on tremendous body punches tonight. That seems to really, really wear him down. Um, can you, is that part of Derek's plan all along going with the body? Um, that's every fight. That's every fight. You know, that's just repetition. That's what we practice in the gym. That's what we've been doing since the amateurs. You know, we've been going to the body. You know, body first and then go upstairs. You know, because the body is a bigger target than the head. So, we like going to the body first, breaking the, breaking the guy down, then bringing it back upstairs. The other question is, you made your point in the ring afterwards. You said, as you said before the fight, that the fighter you want is Keith Thurman. But uh, we all know that that won't be next because he's coming off the injury. He's going to fight somebody else in April. He said himself, sitting right in that spot where you guys did press conference a couple months ago, that he didn't think the fight would happen even perhaps until 2019. You're not going to sit around and wait for him, as you've said. Well, who out there can you fight that's not Keith Thurman that, that can interest the fans or interest you? Um, in your next fight. I mean, anybody. I mean, you know, I'm not going to sit around and wait for him like I've been saying. Um, the whole goal is this year is to stay active and fight quality opponents. So. Um, Right now, I'm just thinking of a homecoming. I'm thinking about going home and fighting in Dallas, my next fight. So hopefully we can make that happen. I want to answer that also. That we, we are giving Keith Thurman an allowance that we did not give a Kell Brook. Because the world expected Kell Brook to fight Ellsworth next. Right? Yeah, but you're giving him a pass now. He had a, he's going, well, you know, everybody giving him a pass because he came off his surgery. Both, both the same situation, so he shouldn't be allowed to wait for two years or whatever he wants to do. He should be able to take, get in there and take the fight. Errol, over here. Congratulations on an impressive performance. This was your first fight since May. That was your first fight since August before. Do you want to be more active, and how many times do you want to fight this year? Um, this year I want to fight three times. Um, you know, I didn't take too much punishment. You know, got hit a couple of times, so you know, I'm looking to come back and either May or June and hopefully have a homecoming in Dallas, but at least three times a year, I, I would like to fight. Errol, you had, ready to move, you had mentioned that um, you thought that uh, Andy Garcia lost or had a draw with Lamar Peterson. What kind of statement is this with him fighting next month? And you know, for fans to make that direct comparison, what you did against him, what he did against him. It's a big statement, you know. Like I, like I always say, you know, when I fight guys, and you know they fought, you know, another lead fighter, you know, I always want to showcase and do better than them. You know, show with the Chris Nigeri fight, they fought Pacquiao, show with the um, Bundu fight, they fought Keith Thurman with two rounds. You know, it's been showing, you know, Kill Brook and the other fighters. So, you know, I wanted to show that, you know, I, it wasn't an easy fight. You know, it was a lot of going into the fight and a lot of, especially in the inside and in the ring because Lamont a crafty fighter and if you back up from him if he sense any type of weakness Lamont's going to come forward so I mean my coach came up with a great game plan and um, you know made it look kind of easy. So you go into the ring with a conscious decision of making that direct comparison and finishing stronger than somebody else? I'm um, not going in the ring but you know doing training you know we make a conscious decision you know, I, I, I think about that. I, I watched the Danny Garcia and Lamar fight. I seen it was a close fight. He could have went either way. So, you know, I wanted to make it look easier than that fight. And I wanted to put on a better performance than Danny did. John Kelly, New York fights. Errol, do you piggyback off of your trainer's statements with regard to Keith Thurman not getting a pass to fight you? Uh, we're in January of 2018. 
obviously we got a long way to go. Do you see any reason why that fight shouldn't be made this year? When I interviewed him earlier uh, this month, he indicated that uh, a lot of things regarding yourself was a little overblown and that he's a bigger puncher than Kel Brook because he hurt Sean Porter a couple times in that fight and Brook wasn't able to hurt him. What do you think about the likelihood of that fight if Keith Thurman is able to come back and let's say April looks pretty good? What would you like to say to Keith Thurman right now? Um, I mean, he said he's a bigger person than these guys, but when the last time he got a knockout? <laughs> I mean, so, the, you know, that, you know, his, the, the, the pedigree opponent is raised and he's not getting the knockouts anymore. You know, he was one time when he was fighting lower caliber fighters, but now he's, he's not getting any knockouts. And, um, you know, I give him a pass. You know, I even said that I've been going on record and say that I let him have a tune up fight. He's been out for a while, he just come off an injury, have a tune up fight. But after that, he should be me. In 2018? Yeah, 2018. This is the beginning of the year, this is January. You have a tune up fight, March, April, and we can fight at the end of the year. Coach Anthony here, but behind the gloves again, I have another question for you. Um, so you beat Kel Brook, you beat Lamont Peterson. Do you feel that you beat, like out of all the guys in the 147 division, do you feel like you've already beat the two best fighters? And if not, who do you think would be the toughest challenge at 147, other than obviously a Keith Thurman as a, as a name, but who else is out there? Who else would you like to fight? Um, you know, with Lamont, he is a top five fighter in the 120 division. With Kel Brook, you know, before I beat him, he was, everybody was saying, you know, RB, he was the best 120 in the division. He's a big guy, he's real sharp, he's got the box and bang. Um, you know, it's a lot of guys for me to fight. I mean, you got a Amir Khan coming, Zach. What do you, how about you and Amir Khan? Come on, someone I mean, I mean, what do you, would you like that fight? Or do you feel like, oh, you just think would you like that fight? <laughs> I, I like the fight, I like the fight. I'm not saying he could win, but I like Man the fight. Man down. <laughs> 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 don't say you're fighting Khan McGregor. <laughs> Hey Earl, correct. I'm TBA Boxer Top Dallas, Texas. Hey, what up, man? Before this fight, a lot of people were saying, "Oh, Earl can't move his head, he can't box." They said you was just a come forward fighter. Did you show everybody tonight your full awesome? I've been told people I can do it all. Like I, like I said before, nobody really made me box, and nobody really made me, you know, move my head or use angles and things like that. You know, even with my coach, my coach, why don't you, you know, I do it in sparring all the time. My coach in the fight, like, why don't, why don't you use your angle, why don't you move and doing this? Because I didn't have to. You know, and just today, I just felt like boxing, <laughs> using my angles and things like that. But you see at the end of the round, I started coming forward. Errol, Chris Connor here, last call radio show. Congratulations on performance first. Uh, we're in an era now where talking trash, Twitter feuds, Instagram posts, that's how you become a big star, whether it's Connor, whether it's Floyd, whether it's Adrian. That's not you. You're not a guy who likes to talk trash. How do you build your brand event? How do you become a guy who can, you know, captivate people who are non-boxing fans, casual fans, when you don't want to go on Twitter, you don't want to go on Facebook, and I'm, I'm guessing you don't want to be one of those guys who acts like an idiot. I mean, Sugar Ray Leonard didn't talk trash either. I mean, Sugar Ray Leonard crossed over and became that guy because his performance in the ring you know, the, you know, his smile, he was a people's person, and things like that, so. Before you went in here, his name came up. Oh, yeah? Yep. <laughs> and things like that. All so. he's got to do is keep beating people's asses like he's yeah. been doing every fight out there. You don't have to play the fool. Just just do what you're supposed to do. And, and if you're exciting enough in the ring and you're destroying top level of competition, you're going to be a star. Five million people saw him fight on network television. 12,000 people. He's, he don't live here in Brooklyn. It would be nice if he did, but he, 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 he man lives in Texas. He came in and there were 12,000 people here tonight. I mean, it's happening. Sorry. Harold, <laughs> 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 you've got to be a special fighter, but there has been a special trainer. Do you think he's trainer to you? Definitely. I mean, definitely. Especially if you look what he's done with Jamel. I mean, Jamel's a guy who, who used to box. He didn't get many knockouts. Um, you know, people was trying to call him boring and things like that. And then now, you know, he's getting knocked. He had, I think, two knock, two knockouts that was that was nominated for knockout of the year. So I mean, you see it. The proof is in the pudding. Even with me, every fight I'm developing, I'm getting better. 
um, we get more calmer in the ring, um, skills and everything else. So, I mean, the proof is in the pudding that he should be coach of the year. He has two fighters on top of the game in both in 147 and 154. Yeah, I was a little disappointed, but you know, with us, we keep our head down and keep working. We're not worried about it. You know, as long as we keep winning, keep looking great, that's all we're worried about. Hey, congrats on the, uh, the win, champ. All right, I'm watching from a round by round boxing. Uh, things have obviously changed since uh, you and the Lamont started back in the day. But uh, anything tonight that caught you off guard with his, uh, with him staying in the pocket so much? Um, did you have any you know, expectations of him fighting a different fight? Uh, no, I, I think, you know, Lamont and the whole game plan was, you know, not to not to get on their back foot because they didn't want me to, you know, become confident and uh, try to press them out. So they tried to stay on their ground and, you know, kind of backfired on them because they didn't expect me to box. You know, they wanted me to just come forward and shoot my load and, you know, go all out. And I was using my jab, boxing, using my angles and my reach and my distance. Uh, hey. last, last question. Hey, uh, Dante's Boxing Nation. Uh, going back to Keith Thurman, like you said, you give him a pass, and it's understandable he could get a tune-up. Do you think it's possible maybe you guys can have a double-header where you guys fight on the same card, and you can nope. sign a contract for that? <laughs> if, he, if he come, man, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm pretty sure something like that. I don't, I don't really see either one of them. But regardless, regardless. <laughs> one last question right here. Right there. Okay. Right, all right. Right back there? Yeah. Uh, John Pendy read about the last Sunday puncher. So uh, congratulations, Eric and uh, uh, Errol and Derek. Uh, so uh, you showed devastating power again tonight. Your sparring partners say you hit like a heavyweight. Derek talks about all the bones you've broken in your sparring partners and uh, your opponents. Is there anyone at 147 who can go to the distance with you, speaking of guys like Danny Garcia, Keith, or Sean Ford? I mean, they could. That's what we're trying for. Like I said before this Lamar Peterson fight, we're trying for the distance. I don't train, you know, for a six-round fight, seven-round fight. I train mentally for a 12-round fight. So if I have, if it's in the 10th, 11th round, you know, I still have gas in the tank. You know, I don't train for early knockouts. If it's come, it come, I'll take it. But other than that, we don't focus on knockouts during training. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone.